Man, I love 22s just for the fun factor. You know, if you're a little disappointed to see me instead of a gorgeous brunette, I don't blame you. But as it happens, our resident gorgeous brunette is on maternity leave. She's actually eight months pregnant with her second child. We're very happy about that. But of course, I'll be looking forward to introducing her to you when she's back in the shooting game soon. And that brings us to part two of our review, the so-called Sig Sauer 1911-22. Why so-called? Well, the astute among you may have noticed that it bears a striking resemblance to the 1911 pattern 22 lr pistol made by German Sport Guns, or GSG for short. That's because it is made by GSG. Back in 2013, SIG's parent company bought a controlling interest in GSG and had them brand some of their 1911s with SIG markings. Apart from the paint, I can assure you that it is the exact same pistol. I've noticed that there are some mixed reviews on the GSG 1911-22, but I'm pleased to report that this one has been absolutely perfect thus far. We've only put a few hundred rounds through it to date, but it's been 100% reliable with the right ammunition, more on that in a second, and surprisingly accurate. Have a look at this 10 round group I shot from 5 yards or 15 feet. I had considered putting a red dot on this pistol, as the rear sight sits in what is called a Novak cut and there are adapters that allow you to install an optic mount in place of the rear sight, but I decided against it. Unlike centerfire pistols whose slides are made of steel, this one is made of aluminum. That's because the 22 lr cartridge does not produce enough energy to reliably cycle a heavy steel slide. I suspected that the combined weight of a Novak mount and an optic would interfere with the cycling of this pistol, and now I think I'm right, because when we tried an almost identical load with a slightly reduced charge, we did see occasional feeding issues. When running the 1235 FPS version of this CCI load, the pistol has been 100% reliable. Drop just 35 FPS and the problems begin. Both of these CCI loads use the same 40 grain copper plated round nose bullets, so they compare well. Another thing to keep in mind if you own one of these pistols or you're considering buying one is how it's lubricated. Since even CCI mini mags have just enough energy to reliably cycle this pistol, you want to ensure that nothing else is in its way. When we bought this pistol, I stripped off all the factory oil and lubricated it with a thin layer of white lithium grease. This stuff really works. It has much higher lubricity than gun oil, meaning it's more slippery, allowing your slide to cycle with less resistance. I'll make a video one of these days on why almost all guns should be greased, not oiled, but for now, know that if you own a GSG 1911, you'll see maximum reliability from using a light application of white lithium grease along with 40 grain CCI mini mags. Another reason to avoid mounting a red dot on these pistols, according to some accounts, is that the added weight can cause the aluminum slide to crack. The good news is that we're pleased with the cheap plastic sights that our version of this pistol came with, despite not being adjustable. We really don't feel any need to upgrade them, but if you do, you can easily mount a fully adjustable rear sight in the Novak cut. The grips, on the other hand, had to go. When we ordered this pistol, the photo on the vendor's website showed beautiful walnut grips with nice stippling and an embossed Sig Sauer logo. Sure enough, when it arrived, we opened the box and there they were, on the owner's manual. The pistol itself had this eyesore, which might be treated wood or it might be plastic. It's honestly hard to tell but it wasn't hard to decide to replace it. That turned out to be a good idea anyway, because my wife has small hands and these nice Magpul MOE grips are both thinner and have this nice thumb channel which helps her as well. If you like this color, unfortunately Magpul seems to have discontinued it. As of this video, they are only available in black, tan, gray, and green. An additional benefit of these grips is that they're compatible with ambidextrous safeties, which this 1911 has. Another issue that shooters with small hands might experience is the protruding mainspring housing that this pistol came with. I replaced it with this flush fitting unit from Dlask, made here in Metro Vancouver, which fit perfectly after some light sanding. It has a nice chain link texturing and the color match as well. Another surprise when comparing SIG's photos of this pistol with the model we received, this one pleasant, is that the frame is black, not dark grey. Yet another pleasant surprise is the trigger. It's really quite good, breaking cleanly at four and a quarter pounds. Because it's a rimfire and I haven't been able to conclusively determine whether, like some rimfires, it's safe to dry fire, I'll use a snap cap to demonstrate its trigger. It's externally adjustable to limit over travel, but as you may have noticed, ours came perfectly adjusted from the factory. Disassembly is straightforward but also unusual among 1911 pattern pistols. Before the slide can be separated from the frame, we have to remove this hex bolt. and drift out this pin. 
We can now remove the slide more or less the same way as other 1911s, then complete field stripping. As you can see from this thread cap, the barrel is threaded at the muzzle, so with a readily available adapter that extends the muzzle past the slide, you can install a noise moderator if you live in a place where the authorities have an outlawed safety equipment. Now, some users have reported these admittedly cheap guide rods breaking. If that happens, we'll just buy an accurizing kit from ZRTS or Tandem Cross. This pistol certainly doesn't need accurizing, but both kits include a stainless steel guide rod, so a breaker should be a good excuse to upgrade some of these internals. In terms of value for money, it's really at the top of its class. We put this one together for 531 Canadian dollars, including the grips, main spring housing, shipping and tax. We looked at Browning's 1911 pattern 22 pistols before buying this one, and they're really very nice, but they cost about twice as much. They are, however, scaled down 15% from the standard 1911 proportions, so they are worth looking at if you prefer a smaller grip size. These 1911s are full size, but with the two grip modifications I mentioned, my smaller framed wife has no difficulty getting a proper grip. Like the Browning versions, they come in several configurations and GSG really gives you a lot of choices. You can get them in a tan finish, or green, or pink, or white camo, or with oversized Olympic target style grips, or even with a mock suppressor. Those last two also have a rail in case you want to run a laser, a light, or both. However you choose, I think you'll find this pistol is really a terrific plinker. It puts a smile on the face of everyone who tries it. Among 22 pistols, the SIG or GSG 1911 is among the best, especially if you love the timeless beauty of the 1911 design as much as I do. If you have any questions about either of these pistols, post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help answer them. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. I'll see you again next time.